Father, we thank you, we praise you, we glorify you, we take the light, God, and come into your house. Even as David said, I was glad, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Father, we thank you so very much, Lord Jesus, for showing up, God. You're the God of all flesh. Lord, you've instituted the church, Father, from the onset, Father. And God, you've called me, and I feel, I feel so humbled over the fact that you've called me to entrust me to be the shepherd of this particular flock. Thank you for these wonderful people that you've assigned me to, Father. And I give glory, thanks, praise, and honor. And I take delight in the fact that, God, your anointing is upon this church. Yes. Your blessings of Abraham are upon this church. Yes. And, Father, we just thank you for where you're taking us, Lord. God, we just know that without a doubt, all of these years we've been together, these few years, we know the best is indeed yet to come. Yes. So, Father, as I open my mouth to speak on your behalf, as we continue on in the gifts of the Spirit, I pray, God, that the anointing of the Holy Spirit would touch my mouth as I open it to speak on your behalf. Lord, I pray that you would touch our hearts and activate the gifts that are in us. Stir those gifts up. Let us desire these gifts that we might see the manifestation of glory in the earth. That your name and your name alone gets all the glory, the praise, and the honor. Bless our time together afterwards, even when we have our meeting, Father. Let the anointing of God be even there, God, that it will flow according to your purpose and plans. We give all the glory, praise, and honor to you for everything you're doing in us, for us, and through us. We ask these blessings and prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Go ahead, take your seats, if you will, and turn in your Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And I want to start reading from there. We've been pretty much talking about the introduction to gifts. We've been touching other areas such as casting out devils. These, these fall into the category of the things that the Lord tells us that uh, will follow us as believers in the book of Mark, chapter 15, uh, 16, verses 15 through 18. It says, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink of any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall <clears throat> recover. Many people over the years have taken scriptures out of context because it says they shall take up serpents. And you know you got people in the west, in the, in the uh, north mountains of uh, North Carolina and in, in certain parts of South Carolina that actually uh, have what they call snake handling services. Where they actually get cobra snakes or venomous poisonous snakes, bring them to church, put them in a cage, take them out of the cage, and just play around with them as if they are handling these snakes daring themselves not to be bitten. Because the Bible says they shall take up serp serp serpents and if they drink of any deadly thing it shall not hurt them. It doesn't mean that we have to go out and tempt God and what's, what's the purpose of tempting God with snakes that are venomous and poison and that can bite and kill you. And a lot of these pastors that have done it have died over the years because they've taken scripture out of context. So you got to read the Bible for itself, but I don't want to get locked down on that. we got to move forward. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. This zeroes in specifically on the area we want to touch at, a touch on, and that's concerning the nine spiritual gifts. 12, uh, 12 verse, uh, chapter of 1 Corinthians, verse number 1 says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away into these dumb idols, even as you were led, Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man uh, can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now, there are diversities of gifts but the same Spirit. There are differences of administrations but the same Lord. There are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is, to, uh, is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues to another the interpretation of tongues but all these work of that one and self same spirit dividing to every man separately as he will 
it, 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 it divides severally as he will. The Holy Spirit gives these gifts as he so desires, as he wills. We've just talked about nine gifts. They're not in order when it's written, but we know that God does have order, but he just kind of spews them out of there. So now uh, we talked about uh, how that during these gifts, even though there are nine of them, the gifts are not locked in a box. These individual gifts, break down these nine, they could specifically be used in any type of way God so desires them to be used. Certain gifts that God gives you can have two or three or four different effects on individuals when it's just one manifestation of the Holy Spirit because there are different operations and diversities of gifts, the Bible says. There are different ways God can use the gift. He can use the gift of healing several times. Some people get a healing that's a recovery, and it takes a while, but you see them progressively get better when there was absolutely no cure to their disease, abnormality, or sickness, but it's a progressive thing, and hands have been laid on somebody, and they progressively get better. Even mental patients, that's one of the hardest conditions in the Bible when it talks about somebody who's off and they're not in their right mind. I mean, that's that's a you need some serious prayer, but guess what? We don't have to make a big deal out of it. The same Holy Ghost that can heal uh, the sick is the same Holy Ghost that can heal somebody who has a sick mind. Yeah. Yeah. And he's the same one that fills people with the Holy Ghost baptism. Yeah. It's the same Holy Ghost that raises the dead. It's not like a different kind. The same one does all of these different manifestations to different levels of degrees. But he's the Holy Spirit. And sometimes he's gentle. Other times he comes in like a wave. Other times he comes in like a tornado and seemingly wrecks the place with his presence. But God chooses how he wants to do it, however he wants to do it. Now, the Bible tells us in the book of Romans chapter uh, 11, verse 29, that the gifts of God, the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. It means this, that when a person, you know what, what repentance means? What repentance simply means is to feel sorry for, yeah. to turn away from your evil ways. The gifts and the calling of God come without anybody doing that. God is still assigned a gift to a certain person because the world, the whole world is supposed to be saved. He's not wishing that any perish, the Bible says, but that all come to repentance. So God has a plan and he'll put a call on somebody's life and a gift on somebody's life and know eventually that they'll come around. And he'll do it, and not in every case does he do it when the person is ready, and you know, sometimes the gifts are there and the person's not ready. Don't ask me why God does it that way. I don't understand it myself. I know if I were God, I'd do it another way. But I'm not God. <laughs> he is. If you were God, you'd probably do it another way. But you're not God. He is. And the Bible says his ways are past finding out. So we don't ask, we don't sit here and try to question God and figure certain things out. We just have to take it at face value and at value and just believe that when we get to heaven, all of these things that are gray areas or questions that we have in our minds will all be made clear. And then, you know, it talks about how we see through a glass dimly. Or, you know, but when we see Jesus face to face, all things are going to be known because we're going to have his body, his mind, his spirit. It's going to be a brand spanking new experience. I can tell you that right now. Amen. Amen. Paul said in Romans chapter uh, 1 verse 11, now, I want you to understand, the gifts can be imparted. They can be imparted in you if you have a desire for these gifts. Because Paul said in Romans 1.11, For I long to see you, that I might impart unto you some spiritual gift, to the end that you may be established. The Holy Ghost through man can be imparted. Yes, an anointed man of God, such as your pastor or any, any other person in leadership or whatever, they can actually lay hands on you and impart a gift in you, whatever gift you desire. It can be imparted by the laying on of hands. I say that because you got teachers, of, of preachers out here teaching that it can't be done that way. Well, why, why are you going to go against certain scriptures that talk about this? You can't just ignore those scriptures Amen. and jump over them and just, you know, they're in the Bible. You have to take it at face value. They can be imparted. I've experienced that in my own life. I, I had certain gifts imparted in me. And I've learned over the years, I've laid hands on individuals that the gifts were imparted in them through my laying on of hands. Don't tell me that's not real and it doesn't work. It's scriptural and it works. Yes, Lord. And God's word is real. Amen? Amen. The gifts of God happen to be in three different categories. You have three different categories of gifts. You have the three gifts of utterance. Somebody say the three gifts of utterance. The three gifts of utterance. The three gifts of utterance uh, basically involve the gift of 
prophecy, the gift of tongues, and the gift of interpretation of tongues. Those are called the three gifts of utterance. Why? Because you've got to use your mouth to speak it out when it comes to these gifts. The word of prophecy comes out of you. Prophetic word is the divine impartation of God's word in you. The gift of prophecy. A divine impartation. Not a fleshly, but a divine impartation of the word of God is a prophecy that comes out. And then the gift of languages, the gift of tongues comes out. When you speak in other languages, you didn't go to school to learn. You know, uh, we all speak English here, but some people can speak two or three different languages. We may have bilingual people here, trilingual, quadlingual, whoever. You know, you may speak several different dialects and uh, languages or whatever. But 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 when you speak in tongues, you didn't go to school to learn it. You didn't sit down under somebody's teaching to learn it, a Rosetta Stone, you know, course to try to figure all this stuff out. You just speak in something. You don't even understand what you're saying. But guess what? It's a fluent language in somebody else's tongue, a language that, that they can interp interpret. And you also could have the ability, the ability to interpret that if you have the gift of interpretation of tongues, which would give you the ability to do that. So the three categories are the gifts of utterance. Okay, now these three gifts make you talk like God. When God speaks, every word he speaks comes to pass. When these gifts come and if they're of God, everything that you say prophetically, if it's from the Lord, is going to come to pass. Amen. Every time you speak, if it's of God, will come to pass. Every uh, interpretation will come to pass. These three gifts make you talk like God. Because God is omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. God is omnipresent. Uh, omnipresent. He's everywhere. Everywhere. Everywhere at the same time. As I speak right now on the other side of this planet, it is dark on the other side of the planet. It's nighttime. It's daytime over here on this side, nighttime somewhere else. But God's working miracles out on the other side of the world. He's, he's blessing somebody now. So it's somebody that may be having a night service where they're preaching right now as I preach. And he, he, they're being blessed by the same God that's right here in our midst yeah, because yeah. he's everywhere at the same time. Hallelujah. Only God can do that. Yeah. And he can concentrate with laser-like focus on each individual's problem as if he's right next to you at the same time. Hallelujah. That's God and only God can do that. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why he's omnipresent. So these three gifts make you talk like God. The next category of gifts of threes happen to be the gifts of revelation. The gifts of revelation. Somebody say revelation. Revelation. The word revelation is not a spooky word. It's not a word that you're to be afraid of. It's not some kind of word that, you know, deep man, revelation. I got some revelation. You know, the book of revelations. Or the book of revelations. It, it's not plural. I mean, it's not, uh, you know, the revelation in the Bible is singular. It says revelation. It's called the book of Revelation, not book of Revelations. Let's turn to the book of Revelations. It's Revelation. It's one revelation that he saw. The word re Revelation simply means to be revealed. To be revealed. It's, it, it's, it comes from a word ap apocrypha. Somebody say apocrypha. Apocrypha simply means this. Uh, you know, you, you heard the word uh, uh, apocalyptic. Anything that's apocalyptic or apocrypha, it sounds like a deep word. It just simply means unveiled or something that has been hidden. Something that's hidden or unveiled is apocrypha. So the book of Revelation contains a lot of ap ap apocalyptic writings. Writings that have been hidden or unveiled. And you need the Holy Spirit to interpret the meaning of the book of Revelation. Because the only way you're going to get it, you can't sit here in your natural mind and try to figure it out when they're spiritually things that are discerned by the Spirit. And the Holy Spirit has to be the one to give you the revelation of it. Do you realize there is more than one interpretation of certain scriptures from the Word of God? Now, there are some scripture interpretations that are absolutely not of God at all. Where people try to get so deep and they try to make a, 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 a round circle fit in a square peg and it cannot fit. It's not the right fit. Or a star shape, they try to put it in a triangle shape. It can't fit. It's not a triangle shape. It's a star shape. You can't force the word of God. It just smoothly slides in there. It fits perfectly. It's perfectly tailor-made by God. 
So it has to be done the right way. So three gifts of revelation. The three gifts of revelation happen to be the three gifts that make you think like God. The first three gifts, tongues, interpretation of tongues, and prophecy, make you talk like God. These gifts make you think like God. They're the gifts of revelation because God is all-knowing. Not only is he all omnipresent, he's present everywhere at the same time, you know, but God is also omniscient. He's omniscient. There's that prefix omni again. He's omniscient. Omniscience means he, he is all-knowing. He knows it all. You know how you tell people you don't know it all. You think you know everything. Well, God does know everything. Amen. He not only thinks he knows it, he does know everything. Amen. You can never, even in your wildest, wildest dreams, even think about trying to understand all of the ways of God. In fact, it's going to take us an, a, a whole eternity to figure God out when we get in our new bodies. It's not like when we get up there, we got all things conquered and we don't know everything. Let me tell you, we'll still be in heaven trying to figure all this stuff out. That's our power. But we got a whole eternity to figure it out. Amen. That's how awesome God is. Yes. He'll never get to the point where you're exhausted and you get to the point where, okay, enough is enough. I think I've conquered it all now. I can't go any further. Yo, when you get to that point, you got to realize when God opens your eyes, you're still at uh, ground zero compared to the whole building project. That goes on for an eternity. So God is awesome. So these three gifts are the gifts of revelation. The word of wisdom. The word of knowledge. Discerning of spirits. Now, notice the Bible doesn't call this in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the gift of wisdom, the gift of knowledge, and then discerning of spirits. It says a word of wisdom. A word of knowledge. That makes a big difference just the mention of it saying a word of wisdom, word of knowledge. It lets you know you don't have the full capacity of all of the wisdom. You just get a little uh, nugget of it. It's a word of wisdom that God will give you at a given moment in time. He'll give you a word of knowledge. You know, these are gifts that God uses individuals in to call people out. They have revelation. They have insight, divine insight about somebody's life. The only way you can do that is you got to spend time with God to hear his voice talk to you like that. And you can get that. You, that. That's a gift that when you put yourself and position yourself before the presence of God, that gift can come on you and work on you all day and all night. Do you know sometimes I exhaust myself with thoughts that come to my mind that just run rampant through my mind and, and, and I almost have to just go to sleep and turn them off because I'm open, my spirit is wide open to receive and God will show me. And some of these things I, I see come to pass immediately. Literally, like the, within the next hour or two or the next day or so, immediately. Other things, it takes a little while. Some things I don't understand because I see it so crystal clear, but in my mind, I'm thinking it's supposed to happen quicker, and it takes sometimes a year or two down the road to happen. And then I go, wow, it came to pass. But when I saw it, I saw it like it was supposed to happen tomorrow. Amen. That's where I get it mixed up. That's where human you know, flesh comes in. You try to decipher this stuff. You don't understand it all. That's why the Bible says we know in part. And we prophesy only in part. We don't have the fullness of the knowledge of understanding. We only get parts of it, like puzzle pieces we've got, we've got to hold on to, and it fits together, and it starts to come together slowly. That's with everybody. We know in part, prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect has come, the Bible says, that which is perfect has come, when we get a brand spanking new body in heaven, that which is in part shall be done away with. So when we get to heaven, we're going to have a brand new body. We're going to know a lot of things. We're going to know things like God knows pretty much. But these three gifts make you think like God. The gift of word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discerning of spirits. We're going to break each individual gift down in detail and give you the meaning, the understanding, so you can know what this is that's working in you and how to respond to it, how to uh, uh, yield yourself to the leading of God's spirit and how to do it. You're not to add to anything God gives you. If God shows you your vision of somebody in a car accident, that's it. You know, and, 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 if you, and if you see the person get ejected out of the car in a vision or something, you, you share that or whatever as the Lord leaves or whatever. But you don't get up here and start adding your own little uh, interpretation to it. Right. That's what error takes place. And then after the wreck, I saw all this blood just come gushing out all everywhere. Woo! And people are screaming. God didn't show you anything but just an accident. And you gotta put your little your, your little take on it. You get dramatic and theatrical with it. And then next thing you know, man, people 
all discombobulated in their minds and looking all cross-eyed at each other, wondering what in the world, and you're messing all up. That's how people, that's how error takes place. Just say the simple thing. One day God told me something deep to share with this lady. Real deep. Tell her I love her. I said, well, don't you love everybody? Yeah, but she needs to hear it right now. I mean, I, 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 I sat there and said, I ain't gonna waste my time. I thought it was flesh. I honest to God, I thought my mind wanted to be used so badly by God that I was making this up in my own thoughts. So I ignored it. Went to my car and I got in my car. The Holy Ghost said, go tell that woman. I got in my car, perfect battery, car in great shape. Got in my car. I, I was getting ready to leave. It was at Marin Christian Bookstore years ago when they used to be over there on Cleveland Avenue. And then I got my car to take off. The car didn't stop. Now that car's got a perfect battery, no mechanical stuff. It didn't stop. It was, I'm like, it was like nothing, nothing. Like it was just dead. I turned the key, nothing. Then I said, okay, Lord, I hear you. I said, I hear you. I went back to the Berean Christian bookstore, came to this middle-aged, middle-aged white lady. She was going through the little section over here by the CDs or whatever. Didn't look like she was uh, suffering. Didn't look like she was sad. You know, it's easy. It would help if somebody looked the part. You know, like, yeah. then you're like, oh, that's the one. But she was just, just whistling like everything is normal. And I'm like, but she don't look suicidal. She don't look like she's at the end of her ropes. And you want me to go up here and tell this lady, the Lord told me to tell you he, he loves you. Well, how does that sound? That's so basic. So I came over there, and, and my heart was pounding. I didn't know how to say it. All you had to do was say it. But I mean, I was kind of like, well, this just don't make no kind of sense. God said, say it, child, say it. I said, excuse me, ma'am. I don't know who you are. I said, the Lord just told me to tell you that he loves you. The baby dropped everything in her hands, dropped it on the floor, bent down on her knees, and bowed her head to the ground, boo-hooing like she was going crazy. Wow. I'm not making this up. And I said to myself, oh my God, what did I just do? Simply been obedient to the Lord. That's what I did. I was just obedient to what God said. Something that simple, she needed to hear. And she proceeded to give me the whole story. Her mom, she was a mom's caretaker, her mom, and died and so forth and just died a couple days ago and she was trying to get over that and then because of the fact that she had gotten off all these uh, months and stuff to take care of her mom, they fired her from her job all at the same time and she was at the point where she was at her wits end, looked like everything but she didn't wear it on her face and she just gave me the whole litany of all of this stuff and then she said to God, Lord I'm, 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 I can't take it anymore, I can't take it anymore, I can't take it anymore, I found out that her husband was cheating, I told my wife all this stuff, I can't remember all the details but it was a litany of stuff she was going through all at the same time she got to the point where she said, Lord I don't believe you love me anymore and the devil was talking to her, making her think thoughts of suicide like if she's not here and she can't escape the pain because it kept coming on her just like a Job situation where she couldn't she was thinking of suicide. She said, Lord, if you love me, you got to tell me today, today that you love me or else I'm getting out of here. I'm taking my life. And I just ignored that little tiny warning, little, little encouragement word. Tell her I love her. God had me to be the spokesperson to tell this woman that. And I'm sitting up here thinking it's so simple. I'm going to get out of it and try to get out of it. And if my car would have started, I would have been out of that parking lot down the expressway. No telling what could have happened to that woman. God had to say, okay, let me, let me help Charles a little bit. I'm going to keep the car shut down for a second. Went in there, took care of business, told the lady. She received it, fell to the ground, went crazy, crazy God. Gave me a whole start, laid hands on. She hugged me and going on you know, and so forth. And I just let the lady know, no, lady, you got a purpose in this life. All of this that you go. See, the word just started spewing out of me. All the wisdom and understanding came out of me as I opened my mouth. I didn't know what I was going to say. It just flowed out. And I encourage and change the woman's whole life by just letting her know God told me to tell you he loves you. And her, her question to her statement to the Lord was, you got to tell me that today. And I told her that. God used one of his servants to tell her, I love you, my daughter, I love you. And it broke the lady's heart. She knew God was real. Simple little stuff. It's the simple little stuff. You don't have to get all spooky with it. And For there, God did his that did Oh, I see three, seven, them, seven mountains of God, the mountain of wisdom and understanding, the mountain of, yeah, yeah, the delightfulness of the perception of God. All that stuff, God, he's, he's just in the simple stuff. We put our spin on it to try to make it deep so we can look like we're validated that much more. When all God wants is the simplicity of the gospel, why are you trying to make it so deep? I saw somebody on Facebook with a poem or something. 
It was so deep, everybody praised that person. I started to say, man, this is just dumb. But I didn't put it on there. I wasn't going to say that. But that's what I showed thought. Trying to be all deep and spooky and everybody just sucking up and praising the person. Oh, that's really deep. Yeah, it's so deep. I don't even understand what you're saying. Trying to impress folks with your, you know, make it to where a little child can understand. That's how Jesus did it. That's the gospel. Why we got to get so deep and spooky with this stuff? I mean, it's the simplicity. If, we, if you're just obedient, people get saved, people get delivered, set free, all this stuff going over your head. Ministers try to outdo each other and out-preach each other and come up with something nobody ever came up with. That's when we get in the danger zone area, trying to do something totally different. And it's so different, Jesus don't even know what you're talking about. He said, that ain't on my agenda, buddy, at all. I don't know where you got that from. But I'm just saying, you don't, you, we don't have to make it all crazy like that. So there are three gifts of revelation. And then lastly, there are three gifts uh, of God uh, called the gifts of power. The three gifts of power. These gifts of power consist of this gift. The gift of faith, the gift of healing, and the gift of miracles. There's a such thing as a gift of miracles. Gift of faith, gift of healing, and gift of miracles. Now, when we say the gift of faith, healing, and miracles, that's a whole other level. That's what we're looking for under the tent. Amen. We're looking for those three uh, gifts, you know, uh, restoring God's power through massive soul winning. Signs and wonders yeah. encompass these three gifts. Signs and wonders encompass the gift of faith, the gift of healing, and the gift of miracles. That's what they would fall under. Signs and wonders. They would fall under the category right there because they're signs and wonders from the Lord on high. You know, and he can do that. These three gifts make you act like God. Act like. This is God's personality. He's power. So these are power gifts. They're called the power gifts. The gift of faith. The gift of healing. The gift of miracles. You see God do miracles. He does healings. He gives people supernatural faith to believe him for, for the invisible, the impossible. And you know, and that means God is omnipotent. He's omnipotent. He's got all power. All power is in his hand. All power. God is omnipresent. He's, omni he's, he's omnipotent. Uh, uh, he's omnipresent. He's omniscient. And he's om omnipotent. Omnipresent means he's everywhere at the same time. You know, omniscient means he knows everything. And omnipotent means he's all powerful. And these three gifts so happen to answer each one of those personalities of God. The three gifts of utterance. The three gifts of revelation. And the three gifts of power. That's how these gifts are categorized. That's how they are categorized. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12. If you can turn there. I've quoted it, but I want to read it this time. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13, 12, I want to read it from two different uh, uh, interpretations, or two different, two different uh, versions. One says, for now we see through, this is King James, for now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I, uh, but then shall I know even as I am also known. And let me reread that. It says, now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I am also known. So when we get to heaven, we're going to know everything basically because we'll be in a brand new body and so forth. But see, now we see darkly, you know, dimly through glass. And here's another interpretation. It says, for now we're looking in a mirror that gives only a dim, blurred reflection of reality as in a riddle or enigma. But then when perfection comes in our new bodies, we will see in reality and face to face. Now I know in part, imperfectly. But then I shall know and understand fully and clearly even in the same manner as I have been fully and clearly known and understood by God. You understand that? Amen. So, so that's, that's basically how it works. That's basically how it works. Now, I want to start on the first group of gifts today. I want to start with the gifts of utterance. The three gifts of utterance, which consist of prophecy, tongues, and interpretation of tongues. Let's deal with this gift called prophecy. The gift of prophecy. Somebody say prophecy. Prophecy. I want y'all to understand that some of y'all work in this gift. Some of you are sitting in the chair right here. God uses you in this gift. Now, 
Because God uses you in the gift of prophecy, please understand and don't let this get confusing to you because this is how error occurs over a period of time and people can be walking in error and not even know it. It does not mean you are a prophet because, because God uses you in the gift of prophecy. The gift of prophecy just comes on you and then it's lifted. It comes on you and it's lifted. You can't just prophesy and turn it on anytime you want to. Amen. Now a prophet can, but you can't. If you don't have that ability, you're not a prophet. A prophet is a person that is considered to be the mouthpiece of God. Yeah. The Bible called a prophet in the Old Testament a seer. He was the one that saw through the eyes of God. He saw what was going on. He, God would use that prophet. God would call them at a young age. Even told, he told uh, 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 Isaiah, before you, you were even born in your mother's womb, I knew you. I, I knew you and I called you to the nations to prophesy. Before you were even born, God already saw. He already had a plan that this would be my mouthpiece to the nations. A real prophet in the Old Testament, the Bible says the way you would tell a real prophet from a false prophet was an easy litmus test. It's simple. Whatever he says comes to pass. Amen. That means he's real. Whatever he said, if he did say it and it didn't happen the time he said it would happen, it meant he was false. It's simple. It's cut and dry. No, no gray areas. Why do we have to get a committee and argue and try to defend what happened and stuff and say, well, no, he meant that, he meant that. You know, just like during the time, and I hate to gnaw on this a little bit, but I just got to go there. Uh, during the time when Donald Trump was a fake election and all this kind of stuff, some people still think it's a fake election. Well, I'm not going to argue with you and try to convince you. If you want to believe that, go ahead and believe that if you want to continue to believe that. You know, but I'm just letting you know that you had the, the, the Christian prophets, big time Christian prophets, got on these internet circles and stuff and different television programs, and they were prophesying that the election won't take place. It's not going to happen. In so and so days, I said to myself, they got the nerve to even tell you how many days. Now, if they wanted to be smart, they, they could say during this season, and that way, that way somebody had to figure it out. But they gave you in eight days, it's going to be something that's happening on this date. And God said, God said, such and such is going to happen. These are prophets. And one of them I know real well. His name is, number is my phone. <laughs> I'm not kidding. He was a, a well-known American prophet all over the you know, nation. And, and, and so well that I was, going to have him, I was going to have him be under the tent until I saw where he turned. And I saw a lot of his videos under certain tents he preached. And I said, man, he, he ain't even preaching Jesus no more. He's preaching politics now. And, and I had to turn it away. I had to turn 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 that down. Because I said, we, we can't. I, 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 my, I, our church folk would be stoning me, boy, if I invited somebody like that to our city. But I, 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 to, to, listen, I know politics, you know, you got some people that are so rigid into this thing that they have literally said, if you are non-Republican, you're going to hell. I have seen these uh, 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 notations on Facebook and Instagram. I've seen it. Now, I do realize, you know, that, uh, that the, the uh, Republican Party has pretty much mostly, uh, mostly Christian values. You know, it doesn't mean everybody that's Republican is a Christian at all. But I'm, I'm just saying a lot of their values, not everything they believe in, I'm not saying that, but for the most part, their values are Christian values. You know, it's in the Bible. You, you can't argue with certain things. And then on the other side, you got people that are so liberal, any and everything goes on. But there's some truths and values they believe that the Republicans don't have. So it's a little bit of a mixture of both. So everybody's all off and crazy. Goes back to the human nature. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. What are we doing preaching politics for? Let's erase that stuff and zero back on Jesus, the, the main topic of discussion, because that thing is a, it's a deterrent to, to, to literally uh, derail people from the assignment God has given them. And they're not preaching Jesus, they're preaching politics. You don't want to hear no politics and one-sided faith or somebody's belief. And what if you don't believe that way? You get up and walk out of there. But Jesus, let's read the word and let's agree on that. That's what we need to be talking about and so forth. Amen. Amen. Now, I said all this to make a point, and I just forgot my point, but that's okay. <laughs> Let me move on. <laughs> It'll come back. Huh? Thank you. Prophets. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So now, when it comes to prophets, 
A prophet is a person that is called the mouthpiece of God. They will prophesy. They will, they will, they will say, thus saith the Lord, and the Lord does it. And, and, and the prophet knows stuff about you. They just keep it to themselves. They don't say it. They don't share it because God doesn't give them the wisdom a lot of times to share. But they can look at you up and down in the spirit and tell you where you're going, where you've been. The whole night. That's a prophet. And it's, it, the gift is turned on pretty much the whole time. Their whole lives are consumed by prophecy. They are the mouthpiece of God. But the gift of prophecy does not operate like that. It just comes on you for a given purpose, a given moment where you prophesy and then it lifts. What do we mean by prophecy? Prophecy is divine utterance. God speaks to you divinely. He utters a word or two. He doesn't speak long sentences to you. He does with a prophet. A prophet can be in a presence of God. God can have a whole entire congregation with a, I mean, a, a conversation with the prophet. But the gift of prophecy, it comes just like raindrops or like popcorn popping. Little pops here, little pops there, little pops here. It just comes on you and it lifts. As it, the, the, this is distributed to you by the Spirit as He will, as He desires. It comes and it lifts. It comes and it lifts. That's the gift of prophecy. Now the gift of prophecy has a two-fold two purpose. It for, it's, it's what we call foretelling and forthtelling. <clears throat> foretelling and forthtelling. Foretelling is spelled F-O-R-E-T-E-L-L-I-N-G. Foretelling. You know, like you foretell the future. And then forth. You know, forth. F-O-U-R-T-H. Forth. T-E-L-L-I-N-G. Forthtelling. Meaning present tense. One is a future tense, one is a present tense. Prophecy comes to you two ways. In present tense, what's happening in your life currently, or it can tell you what's going to happen in the future. That's how the gift of prophecy works. So when you walk, when you operate in the gift of prophecy, thank God you operated, operated. The Bible even tells you to desire to prophesy. Desire this gift. Desire it. Because prophecy brings about two, three different things: edification, exhortation. Or comfort. It edifies, it exhorts, and it comforts. If I if I if I come up to Daniel and I say, hey man, you know, you're not doing right. And if I say this openly in, in, in front of everybody, is that edifying? No. Is that comforting? No. Is that uh exhort or exhorting him? No. But now guess what? If I were a prophet, a prophet could do that. Because a prophet could tear down and build up. That's his call. He's the mouthpiece of God. He, he, prophets always came to Israel as a warning before destruction would come. And anytime God, see God didn't just lose his temper and just go off on a nation. He always is in control. He's a cool God. He's got everything handled in his perfect power. He would always give them a warning. And the warning was through the mouthpiece of God called a prophet. Israel, repent for judgment shall come upon thee. If you don't do thus and so, God is like, I'm getting ready, I'm, I'm telling you up front, you're about to die. <laughs> but I'm giving you a warning, you can still live. If you repent, come back to me and I'll just pass this thing on by. That was the one, and he gave him a certain amount of days. If it didn't come, God will send an angel to come in there. 85,000 souls dead with one stroke of that angel's wing. 85,000 men dead. God says, any questions? Yeah. Yeah. Now it's time to line up. With 85,000 just lost their souls. Yeah. See, God will warn you first. He's not playing around. God don't have jokes. Yeah. He's telling you the truth. He'll, he'll get you ready, prepare. That's a prophet. A prophet will prophesy. He, he sometimes prophesies doom and gloom. Because he is the voice of God. But the gift of prophecy does not work like that. It only edifies, exhorts, and comforts. And it's not on that person all the time because they're not a prophet. Yeah. It only comes whenever the Holy Spirit wants it to come, and they will foretell or foretell, and that's it. It lifts. They don't walk in prophecy all the time. So when God uses you in this gift of prophecy, don't you go buy no business card calling yourself Prophet Joe Black. <laughs> You ain't no prophet Joe Black. You ain't no prophet nobody. You're just a Christian, a child of God, a warrior for Christ. Amen. Just go out and share the word and keep your mouth shut. You don't have to put no cards out there. Kinko, uh, what is it? Uh, 
right. uh, uh, Vista Print and all that stuff, profit. So I shook your hand last week. You, you were reference so so now you're profit so so you got a promotion over, over that period of time. You're not a prophet if you just use, if you use by God, you may call yourself that. Everybody else may call you that and egg you on, but you're not a prophet, sir or ma'am. You're not. You're, you're, you're a child of God that God uses in the gift of prophecy. Thank God for the fact that he uses you. Amen. But don't get your big head thinking you're some prophet and everybody calling you prophet so-and-so or prophetess so-and-so. You just are used by God periodically in a gift. Wow. And you're going out here like, hey, I'm around. <laughs> Everybody's supposed to open the door, bow down to you, and right. you know, no, it don't work that way. Humble yourself before that. <laughs> You see, the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance, meaning that you could be the biggest uh, uh, sinner and still be used by God in the gift. Right. It doesn't mean God has endorsed your life. Right. It means God made a covenant with that gift and that person who needs to be blessed is still going to be blessed through your raggedy lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. They'll still be blessed, but you're going to have to ask for God in judgment. Yeah. Remember that scripture that says, many will say unto me, Lord, have we not cast out devils in your name, healed the sick, raised the dead, all these are gifts. What does God say? Because God used them. The only way they could get healed was God had to use them. I never knew you. Depart from me. What do you mean you never knew me? How else do you think that these people were healed? Yeah, it was through me. What do you have to know? No, but you never repent. I was using you to get my word through uh, uh, individuals, but you perverted my word. You, your lifestyle didn't measure up. And you have to answer to God over something like that. Yes. You don't want to be one that, you know, in that day sitting here crying and going, oh God, please let me in. And so, no, just, you know, get it together up front. Okay, listen. Fourth tale means to come forth. It means to come forth. What's going on now? When somebody prophesies, a word of prophecy comes on you. They'll say, hey, you know what? The Lord is telling me the situation you're in right now. Sir, ma'am, it's about to change. God's getting ready to change that thing in just a, in a matter of a few days. That's telling right now what's, what's happening, what they're going through right now currently. To, forth, to foretell is futuristic. I told this lady at a church years ago, I saw her working with children. Lots of kids. I said, sort of like a daycare center. Sort of like, I said, I said, sort of like a daycare center. That was, those were my words. I said, I see you surrounded by these little children, working with kids. And the lady was young and so forth, and she said, nah, that ain't a guy. I'm a, I'm a, I said, what do you do? I'm a radio disc jockey. I said, oh, oh, okay. And then I, all I, you know, I, all I said to myself, because I was young in the gift, I said, well, I guess I just miss God all together. I just flat miss God. So five Plus, maybe six, seven years went by. We, we, the church I was attending, we went from that location to the cathedral where it was built, came over to the cathedral, and that lady didn't even go to our church anymore. And one Sunday, she came down to rededicate her life to the Lord. And she got saved and so forth. And every time she would get saved, you know, uh, being an evangelist there and so forth, my duty was to usher all the new converts back in the back. We had to give material and all of this. And I'm sitting back and talking, and so she comes up to me and said, you don't remember me, do you? I said, no, I don't. She said, well, when we were over there across the street at the Sam's building, which is now, you know, the uh, epicenter now. But she said, you gave me a prophecy. And I looked at you like you were crazy. I said, I, I still don't know. She told me her name. I still didn't remember. But this is what I remember. She, she said, you don't want to tell me I was, you saw me around all these kids. And I, you said it was sort of like a nursery. But I told you I was a radio disc jockey. I said, yes, yes. I know who you are. <laughs> I remember that. She said, guess what? I got my third daycare center I just opened up. <laughs> what? <laughs> God was using me to foretell a word of prophecy, and I'm thinking that I missed the voice of God. Mm. Yeah. But it came to pass three or four, I mean, seven or eight years later. Mm -hmm. That was her third one, so it could have been five years, you know. But that's how the gift works. Just trust God, use it, and trust God. So I have to stop it right here, everybody. All right. 12, about 12.30, like I promised. Right. That's just the first gift of the first of the three categories, the gift of prophecy. We're going to hit a little bit more on that next week, but we're going to break tongues and interpretation of tongues down next week. We're going to go from scripture so you'll know how to use the tongues, when to use them, how many times, you know, what, what you can say, what you cannot say. We want to make sure that this thing is in order. So at this time, we're going to go ahead and end this service.